Good day ladies and gentlemen, I'm Briareos Kerensky and welcome to the last video of the 2020 holiday season special. In this video I will show you three games and these are quite important games to me. The first is MechWarrior 2, 31st Century Combat. Then we have MechWarrior 2 Expansion Pack Ghost Bears Legacy. And finally MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries the first of a very long line of MechWarrior games named Mercenaries. And as I unbox them, I will explain why these games are so important to me. Let's start off with the original MechWarrior 2. So, this is MechWarrior 2 31st Century Combat, the first game in the MechWarrior 2 saga, and of course the sequel to MechWarrior. This is a PC game and as typical of PC games in the 90s, it comes in a huge box. You will have a sense of its scale once I pull off the CD. On the front cover we have the title along with the subtitle and a Wolf Clan Timberwolf emerging from a flaming background. We have a logo here to testify that this is a Battletech official product and down here we have a logo that we've seen only once maybe on this channel but it was back in the day when Activision was actually doing good games. Let's take a look around the box. On the side, once again, the title of the game and the reminder that this is an IBM CD-ROM and the most important thing about PC games back in the day, system requirements on bottom. So, on the other side, oh, there is the title and the contents. Let's zoom in onto those. The contents are as follow. One CD-ROM disk, codes and procedures manual, installation guide and registration card. And before I forget, and if I can show you, the MechWarrior 2 title is printed in a very slight relief, just like the Timberwolf on the front, which also has a glossier finish than the rest of the box. So, this is the top, and... The system requirements. Let's zoom in onto those as well. System requirements for MechWarrior 2 are as follows. Of course you'd need an IBM PC with a 486 processor and 8 megs of RAM. Despite MechWarrior 2 not being the most graphically intensive game uh, even in its time, these were quite high requirements uh, at that time. So, of course, you need a PCI or VESA local bus video card. 640x480 was the minimum resolution of the game, DOS 6, and a number of compatible devices. Then there is a list of supported sound cards, when PCs had sound cards to produce sound, and then supported input devices, and if you were one of those lucky guys with an internet connection, a 96 BPS modem would suffice, or even a null modem collection, wow, this game is old, and IPX network, not even Ethernet, oh, yeah, this game is pretty old. And on the back, MechWarrior 2, the title, four screenshots along with a description and a nice introduction of when MechWarrior 2 takes place. This is the refusal war between Clan Jade Falcon and Clan Wolf. So, let's take a look at the contents themselves. Jade Falcon Call to Arms Leaflet, the same thing for Clan Wolf. Install Guide and inside the registration card. The all important control reminder. 
though this is the this is the registration card the manual and the game disc and just to give you an idea this is the box and this is the CD so let's take a detailed look at the contents this is the game disc that on the front cover has the same artwork as the box, the Spine, MacWarrior 2, and on the back just a recreation of the other box. And the game disc in all its plain glory. And because it doesn't take a lot of time to go through the game, let's take a look at the installation guide. And as I go through this uh, little manual, let me tell you about MacWarrior 2. I bought this game uh, as a birthday gift uh, when I was still in junior high, so yeah, I'm kinda old. And uh, I wanted this game after playing uh, the demo that I found on a demo disc included in a gaming magazine. Yeah, that's 1995 for you. And in the demo you only had four Max, uh, Timberwolf, Moroder 2C, and uh, I don't remember the other two. And I think it was just one mission but uh, I played it so much that when I got the game I was so incredibly happy. So incredibly happy. And uh, with MacWarrior 2, the game, I started my love for Battletech. This is where everything uh, originated. And uh, let's go to the codes and procedures of the Warrior cast. I, did know, I didn't know a thing about Battletech. A thing. And this game sucked me in. I first bought uh, the boxed set of the 4th edition, the Italian 4th edition. And I think this is a stain. I left. Sorry. And... Uh, from there on onward, it all snowballed. Although I do remember, uh, uh, before uh, trying out MacWarrior 2, reading about the Battletech centers uh, in Chicago and the rest of the United States. And uh, this, that is one bucket list uh, I hope I'll be able to tick off one day or another. I really like uh, this annotation uh, at the sides. This manual is both, is, uh, both descriptive and uh, also gives you good notes. Formations, of course. Star formation, you only have two star mates in MacWarrior 2. Well, in the whole MacWarrior 2 trilogy. The ever so important controls. I always remember that once hit levels got past a certain uh, level, I would keep down the O for the override shutdown button down all the times. Because I always run a mech with only energy weapons, especially PPCs. Three PPCs and an LRM uh, 10.
I never use the mouse to control Macquarie or 2, always the keyboard or uh, joysticks. Never really tried uh, with the mouse. Virtual I.O. Helmet. I forgot that <laughs> this was in as a supported peripheral. The customization is pretty much uh, as in uh, the uh, board game. Although Max had a limit to 10 weapons, and for example, the Nova has a slightly different uh, primary config with two medium lasers replaced uh, by two medium pulse lasers. As you can see, no, this is the standard configuration, straight from the manual. Okay. And to me, MacWarrior 2 is still the best MacWarrior game. In terms, in terms of combat, MacWarrior 5 uh, is better, although arguably, and uh, that would be a completely new video if I had to talk about those. But in terms of mission variety uh, and general feel of the game, I absolutely love MacWarrior 2 more than any other game in the Macquarie uh, series. And that's it for the manual. These are the two leaflets that serve as a call to arms for the respective clans. Very quickly, this is a warning about online registration, at least for the UK, and this is the registration card proper, which I won't show you around or even open, because back in the day I filled this up and I don't want to show you my old address or blur everything out, because really, believe me, I would have to blur the entire thing and it would be pointless for me to show it. This card serves two purposes. First, it's an installation guide for the NetMac demo, and on the other side, there is a reminder of all the controls. And this says demo because NetMac, the full, uh, let's say, expansion that lets you play Macquarie 2 online and on local networks, was a separate purchase that I do not own. But a demo was included with the game. On the flip side, the instructions continue, and this time is for how to connect. And here we have all the controls available along with how the HUD is laid out. And here is the keyboard. And from Macquarie 2, let's move on to its expansion pack, the Ghost Bears Legacy, that on the front cover has a Mad Dog, which I guess is a good fit for the bears, although they have many more iconic mechs. And here is the reminder that this is an expansion pack and you need to have Macquarie 2 to play it. So, the side, Macquarie 2, and the reminder that this has changed. Uh, Windows 95 was starting to take uh, hold of the market and uh, this is a reminder that it's a DOS CD-ROM. So, top, the other side, and the bottom, as the requirements, uh, let's just zoom in very quickly to check them. System requirements for Ghost Bears Legacy don't change a bit compared to Macquarie 2, but you do need the Macquarie 2 CD-ROM to install the game. 
and now we are done with the requirements let's go back to the main box and its rear cover with four screenshots that more or less depict the same stuff that was on the Macquarie 2 base game another reminder and the Mad Dog once again let's take a look inside We have the game, and before you asked, uh, no, I did uh, uh, throw away or just misplaced the support for the base game, unfortunately. And nothing more. And the manual of the game. Game disc for Ghost Bears Legacy that uh, it's pretty much what we've seen uh, for the base MacWarrior 2. We have the Mag Dog, the name of the expansion, the spine, uh, well, there is expansion pack, but the rear cover is slightly different with three screenshots taking center stage, name of the expansion, and a brief description of what you are going to do here. And this side, the disc is pretty much the same as MacWarrior 2. Let's take a look at the manual that starts off with the Ghost Bears logo. Table of contents, installation, and there is also a brief uh, section about Windows 95. I don't think the game will be able to run all that well on Windows 95. And back in the day when Windows 95 started to come out, I still had a 486, so Windows 95 itself didn't run properly, let alone a polygonal game onto it. And uh, battle max uh, that uh, include a number of uh, Einer Sphere, IS, and I never knew what IS meant uh, until I picked up uh, the lore of the universe. And it also features uh, a number of second line clan max, uh, like the Grizzly or the Ornered Howl. And this is pretty much a collection of some of the 3055-3050 Max. Uh, well, again, I filled up the registration card. Does it say anything? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, I also didn't really have a DX266, I had a 486DX50. Yeah. And that's it for uh, the Ghost Bears Legacy contents. MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries has the same layout as the two previous games, but for the cover we switch to a Niner Sphere mech. This is a Moller or Davoku, depending from which side of the Niner Sphere you hail from. And here there is a reminder that this is a brand new game, not an expansion pack. And yeah, internet was starting to become a thing. So. On the sides, and also Windows 95 was starting to become a thing. So, these are the requirements. Let's zoom in very quickly. And, oh, we also have the contents here. System requirements for Macquarie 2 Mercenaries don't change much from the base game. First you have the common requirements like CD-ROM drive and 62 megs of uncompressed disk space. Then if you look to run this game on DOS, DOS 6.22 
and the same 486 processor and the same 8 megs of RAM. But if you want to upgrade to Windows 95, you need a Pentium 75 megahertz processor and 16 megs of RAM. And if you want to venture online or local network, the requirements are pretty much the same, but now the game supports novel network along with proper uh, internet play. Next to the requirements we have the contents, which are a CD, manual, installation guide, registration card and keyboard reference card. And on the back, why not changing a layout when it's perfectly fine? Four screenshots, the same cover Mac and a short description. Oh, manual, and I think that inside, yeah, there is a registration card, and wow, this, uh, oh wow, there is my, my old address, let's not show this. Game, and manual. Well, nothing out of the ordinary for the layout of the front cover of the game disc nor the spine or the back. The CD, instead of being black, it's a bright red and there is a manual booklet. Let's see what it is. I don't really remember. Oh, installation guide. And uh, as you might have noticed, uh, I didn't find uh, the keyboard layout reminder, which is probably due to this being an Italian version of the game, and uh, the keyboard layout would have changed. Uh, most probably the publisher slash importer didn't really want to spend the extra money to do a uh, keyboard reminder layout uh, for this game. But we also have another manual that, uh, well, it's the same as before, just in Italian. Well, let's quickly browse through it. This is the manual or the Tri-M Mercenary Academy which starts with a rather dorky looking atlas but this is probably based on the 3050 uh, iteration of the Mac and that drawing isn't particularly good. And Software Co is an Italian distributor so maybe, just maybe, Yes, it is in Italian. So we have the index, a brief description of the interface, all oh, the lone wolves. If you ever read the Galtor campaign uh, um, source book, you know what this mercenary band is. weaponry and also uh, controls, keyboard controls to fire the weapons a reminder on how to manage hit levels this is pretty much the same as MacWarrior 2 just uh, uh, updated for MacWarrior 2 mercenaries, they had to, uh, sorry, the heat tracking uh, indicator is uh, different and uh, I've always found uh, it confusing compared to MacWarrior 2. So yeah, this is a very bad translation of Wolf's Dragoons uh, and being uh, draggy uh, is uh, dragons, not dragoons because Dragoons, uh, if I'm not mistaken, identifies a very peculiar 
military uh, formation and they were the ones that back in the day were traveling on horseback but fought on foot um, unlike the cavalry that moved and fought on horseback but this is not a history lesson especially if I'm wrong about that and Merknet Credits and that's it for the Italian manual of MacWarrior 2 mercenaries. And with this I conclude the unboxing of the MacWarrior 2 trilogy. I am not entirely sure that this video will be the last of the year, but if it is, I hope you will all have a wonderful holiday season and hopefully 2021 will be better than the year that just passed. I hope you've enjoyed this special unboxing and I thank you all so much for sticking around this year. Briare Oskarensky, over and out.